Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video is going to be a review, demo, wear test, and of course, skincare ingredient discussion of the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint that people cannot stop talking about. I was so excited when I saw this launch because I have been really struggling to find light coverage products that look natural and fresh on the skin that don't leave me looking really greasy and oily by the end of the day because my skin definitely leans oily. So if you have been struggling with that as well, you've come to the right spot because we're gonna do a full day wear test. I'll show you how this holds up by the end of the day. And then we'll talk about ingredients, of course, and I will let you know my thoughts on this. Is it as good for the skin as it allegedly makes the skin look? We're gonna find out. So before we jump into it, in case you're new here, my name's Abby and I love all things beauty. I post a lot of skincare and hair care content on my channel, sometimes makeup sprinkled in and favorites, hauls, and empties. So if you're into that kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Both of those things really help to support me with engagement. So thank you so much for doing that. Instagram and TikTok handle right here. You should definitely come hang out with me over there. And my Lightroom preset filters for editing Instagram photos will be listed in my description box below as well if you are interested. So. That is everything, let's jump into this review. Okay, product details here, pretty standard amount of product for a foundation, 1.08 fluid ounces. I thought it was actually gonna be less because it kind of has a smaller bottle, but standard for a foundation and retails for $29.50. They have 25 different shades available, which is definitely a lot less than they normally carry. I believe they have 40 or over 40 shades for their foundations and concealers maybe not their concealer, but definitely their foundation. However, with a product like this that is lighter coverage, I do understand that it is easier to kind of get away with something that's not your perfect match because the coverage is not as intense. Whereas with something that is full coverage, you do have to be a little bit more precise with the shade or it's really obvious that it's not your perfect match. And then out of those 25 shades, they have them broken up by light, light, medium, 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 deep, and deep. They all have five to six shades within each of those categories, except for light where they only have have three shades but then across all of those they do have cool to neutral to warm undertones available so the shade that I picked up is shade 8 which is actually light medium with warm undertones okay so this is supposed to have buildable light to medium coverage a quick blur complex whatever that means for a hydrating diffused effect to the skin it's supposed to help to smooth texture and also layer well with primer and skincare products and you can apply it with a finger or a brush it also says it's humidity sweat and transfer resistant which again is why I was like ooh it's on I gotta try this product and in looking at the ingredient label for this product I was very very excited I will just say right off the bat that it gets my stamp of approval there's so many nice hydrating and replenishing ingredients in this so aside from glycerin which is just a very standard hydrator and basically everything this also has urea which is going to help to protect the skin barrier it has sodium hyaluronate or hyaluronic acid trihalose which is a sugar molecule it has vitamin E to help to condition the skin and an amino acid called serine as well which can help to replenish but on top of that, this also is going to work for those that are sensitive and acne prone because there's no fragrances in it, there's no essential oils, and the only ingredient that could be potentially comedogenic is at the very bottom of the label, so I'm really not concerned about it at all. That means it's going to be in a small concentration and there's nothing else in this product that should cause pores to clog. And that ingredient, if you're curious, is called algae not algae, algin, which actually comes from seaweed. It's a sugar molecule, but again, it's not something I'm worried about being at the very bottom of the label. So overall, double stamp of approval here. As someone with skin that's very sensitive and as someone that has very acne prone skin, this is a win in my book. Okay, let's jump into application now. And I first wanna show you guys what this looks like on the back of my hand so that you can get an up close feel for that formula before we talk about application. So this actually had a little bit more coverage to it and was a little bit thicker than I was expecting, but not in a bad way. It still has a nice lightweight formulation, but I think just based on the description and the name of it, I was expecting it to be really, really liquidy and really watery and have a very sheer amount of coverage, but that's definitely not the case at all which made me more excited to try it because I actually think those really sheer watery formulas are what make me look very greasy by the end of the day. So that is what that looks like. Definitely a good light to medium coverage. Now let's jump into application. So I'm gonna show you guys how this applies first with a foundation brush, then I will show you application with my fingers, and then we will jump into the sponge application. So the foundation brush that I'm using here is just from It Cosmetics. I will list that below if you guys are interested, and I loved, loved the way that it worked with this product. I think it blended it beautifully, it didn't bunch up, there was nothing unpleasant about the application process 
with that brush. It really worked nicely. And overall, I was actually really impressed by the way that this applied with a brush because another problem that I often have with these lighter coverage, lighter weight products is that when I use a brush, they will just pull and streak and that didn't happen at all with this. I feel like the coverage holds up consistently while I'm blending it out, but it still has that nice lighter coverage look to it. I really do think it's beautiful and I like the fact that you can still kind of see my moles peeking through, but it helps to even out my skin tone, which is definitely just what I go for. Now let's jump into applying this with my fingers. So I really did not have high hopes for this because I feel like I've never tried a product that I love applying with my fingers. I think it always just kind of looks not quite as blended, but honestly, I don't think that's the case here. I think it looks really, really good with finger application, which just completely took me by surprise. So if I had to point out a difference between the brush application and the fingers, it would just be that the side that I applied with my fingers looks like it maybe has a little bit more coverage because we don't have that brush to pick up excess product. But still, I feel like the difference is so small. Like when I was just looking at my face in the mirror, I really could not tell a difference between the two sides. So that's exciting. If you just prefer to apply with your fingers, it is totally something that you can get away with. Very easy product to work with in that sense. And this finish, oh, got me so excited at first because unlike, again, a lot of other lighter coverage products that I've tried before, it doesn't have that super glossy, dewy look to it that just doesn't really work for oily skin types, but it still looks fresh and pretty and healthy on the skin. So I would definitely say it has more of a natural radiant finish. It's not matte by any means, but it's not, again, overly dewy. So somewhere in between, really, really pretty in my opinion. Okay, so now for damp beauty sponge application, I wanted to see also how this builds if we're able to build it up a little bit. So I sheared it out first with that damp beauty sponge. That's just going to pick up the excess product before going ahead and applying a little bit more. You are able to build this up, but it's definitely not something that gets to completely full coverage, which is not what I was going for with this product anyway. So that wasn't something that bothered me. And I still do think that with that second layer, it looks very pretty and fresh and natural on the skin, but you do just get a little bit more of a medium coverage versus light. And here's what that application looks like after using the damp beauty sponge. So no surprise here. I love the way that this looks. I always prefer application with the damp beauty sponge for any skin product, foundation, CC cream, BB cream. But honestly, I was surprised here because I was expecting to see more of a difference like I normally do. And again, I don't think there's that much of a difference between the sponge and the brush and my fingers. I think you get a really similar result with all three and all three are beautiful. If I had to pick one, it would be the sponge because I just think there's something about that slight bit of water in the sponge that really helps to enhance the way that products look on the skin. But for what it's worth, I think you can use any method for application and end up loving the results, which is honestly very rare. And then finish of this on the skin feels very nice and lightweight. No complaints about the way that it feels. It's not heavy, it's not sticky. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing a lot of product. It's not something that I feel is very tacky to touch either that's going to transfer, which is great. All of those things are also typical problems that I have with light coverage products. So honestly, across the board, initial impression, shock kind of, but also not. Like I knew this was supposed to be good, but truly very, very impressed right off the bat. And to really put this to the test, I decided to not use much setting powder at all. So I did set the concealer under my eyes. I always do that no matter what, otherwise concealer creases on me. But for the rest of my face, I actually used cream products and I just used a little bit of setting powder in the T-zone area of my face. So forehead, nose, and chin, but I left everything else. So with that said, let's jump into the wear test. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys two separate updates so that you could see what it looks like after three to four hours of wear, so midday and then end of day after about nine hours. And for this three to four hour check-in, I think it held up beautifully. Coverage stayed intact, not breaking up anywhere on the skin, and I don't look greasy. I definitely do look a little bit dewier than when I began, but that happens to me with any product, even if it's a full coverage matte foundation, because I have oily skin. That's just, it's going to happen a little bit, but I'm very impressed by the way that this is controlling my oils, given the fact that I hardly used any setting powder. Very impressive again. And for the nine hour update, I honestly think it still looks amazing. The coverage has continued to hold up, 
while I do look again a little bit oilier than that three to four hour update. What the heck? I don't look greasy. What is this magic? I don't, I don't understand, but this is actually magic. This is amazing. Do I even need to tell you my final thoughts on this? I mean, my excitement did not stop throughout the entire video. So if that was not any indication, I 100% recommend this product. I think that it's beautiful. And again, if you have oily skin and you've been looking for a fresh looking product that holds up on the skin throughout the day, look no further. You are going to be in love with this. This is my new favorite for sure for a fresh faced look. I think it's gorgeous. It's so perfect. And that is officially everything that I wanted to cover for this Fenty Beauty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint review. I really hope this helped you guys out and helped you to figure out if you're actually going to purchase these or not. Let me know your thoughts either way in the comments below. Are you interested? Are you going to pass on this one? Do you already have it? Did it work really well for you or did you not love it? I'm super curious to hear your thoughts because this product has me freaking out a little bit. So if you're gonna pick it up after watching this, I will have it listed in my description box below. And if you enjoyed this video, again, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing that. It means a lot, really helps to support me and make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.